In the circuit in the figure below this one, the switch has been in position A for a very long time, but moves instantaneously to position B at t equals zero. The first question is, determine what is the current in the inductor right after the switch moves, so that is at t equal zero plus. We know that the current in this inductor is not going to change instantaneously, so if we compute that at zero minus, the current is going to be the same as zero plus, which is what they ask of. Why to compute that at zero minus? Because at zero minus, the circuit was in TC steady state, and this inductor could be represented by a wire, like this. The switch is in A, this is the 3 ohm resistor, and this is the inductor, behaving like a wire. What about the 4 ohm resistor? Well, the 4 ohm resistor has been bypassed by the wire-like inductor. How is that? Well, imagine this was the reference node we chose for our computation, because this uh, inductor behaves like a wire, then reference node spills up to the top of the circuit. This is the reference. So the current in this resistor would be 0 minus 0 divided by 4. That is 0 amps. Because it's 0 amps, that resistor plays no role in this drawing. All we have is the 12 volt source, the 3 ohm resistor, and the inductor that is represented by this wire. And this is the current in the inductor at 0 minus, which is the same current at zero plus, which is what the problem is asking us about. And what value is that? 12 over 3? That current is 4 amps. And that answers question A. Now, part B says, find the final value of the current in the inductor when a long time has passed after moving the switch to position B. In other words, now we move the switch over to B and we wait a long time. Part B asks, what is the final value of the current in the inductor, this one, when a long time has passed after we moved the switch from A to B? Hmm. And that is, we move the switch from A to B, in fact, removing this 12 volt source off the circuit, and then we wait for a very long time to draw the circuit at T infinity. This is the situation. The source is not there anymore, the switch is on, on B, and the inductor is again in DC steady state because we waited a very long time. It's a wire, again, this wire. Well, the current in this 4 ohm resistor again is 0 amps for the same reason we saw before it's been bypassed by the wire-like inductor. We need to compute this current. The current in the inductor at the infinity, the final value of the current of the inductor with that assumed polarity, which is the same one we established at the beginning of the exercise. Well, what is the current in this circuit? Let's see, this is a DCR circuit. The current is going to be flowing like this, yeah, counterclockwise, and it will be 4 over 8, half an amp. Half an amp flowing like that, half an amp. 4 over 8. But the assumed polarity of this one dictates that this current is negative half an amp. And that is the answer to part B of this exercise. Now, what is part C? Part C is a little bit more interesting. C, what is the time constant of the transition between the initial and the final value? That is happening once we switch over to B. All we need for that is the Thevenin equivalent of the circuit seen by the inductor. In reality, we need only the R7 and of that 7 and equivalent seen by the inductor after we move the switch over to B. For T after 0, after we move the switch over to B, this is the equivalent circuit seen by the inductor. Actually, that is the actual circuit seen by the inductor. This 4 ohm resistor, this is A, this point here, and this is B. That is where the inductor would be connected. By now, we are observing that circuit. We find the Thevenin equivalent. Actually, we find only R Thevenin. To find R Thevenin in this circuit that has only round sources, we kill the source. That is, we replace the source with a short circuit and find the equivalent resistance scenes. I 
at the port AB. That is 4 in parallel with 8. R7 is 4 in parallel with 8. That is that is 2 and 2 thirds of an ohm. Well, why do we need that? Because now we come back and we connect the inductor to the equivalent circuit. Mm -hmm. We connect in here, the inductor. And that inductor sees only R7 and 2.666 ohms. The time constant seen by that circuit is going to be L divided by R7. And that is the value of the inductance. 0 0.1 Henry, 0 0.1 divided by the Thevenin resistance seen by the inductor after we move the switch over to B, which is 2 and 2 thirds of an ohm. That is 0 0.0375 seconds. 37.5 milliseconds. And that answers part C of the question. The last one, part D, is the current in the inductor as a function of time for t after zero. Well, we have almost everything. We have the time constant. We have the initial value of the current in the inductor, which was 4 amps. We have the final value on the inductor, mm -hmm, which is negative 0.5 amps. Now we can write the current in the inductor, I L of t. And that would be mm, the initial value which is 4 amps, minus the final value, which is negative 0.5, minus minus 0.5 is positive, 0.5 times the exponential with this time constant. Negative t over 0 0.0375, plus the final value, which is negative 0.5, negative 0.5 amps. And that is the current. And that current is, of course, 4.5 times the exponential minus 0.5. If we were to draw that current, which the exercise is not asking us to do, we would see that that um, current in the inductor as a function of time begins here at 4 amps, up here, and ends below 0 at negative 0 0.5 this way. This is the shape of that current and it decays with this time constant. And that is the solution to that exercise. Thank you very much.